Hello and welcome to this first lesson which is about using Monte Carlo analysis in project simulation. First of all, what is Monte Carlo analysis? Costs and durations of individual project tasks are rarely deterministic in nature, meaning that they usually can only be considered to vary between certain minimum and maximum values. Whenever you are dealing with problems having this kind of stochastic features, some kind of simulation or modeling is required. One of the simplest modeling methods is Monte Carlo, which relies on repeated random sampling to obtain numerical results. Now, if we think about coin tossing, running a Monte Carlo simulation would mean drawing a pseudo-random uniform variable from the interval between 0 and 1, then assigning value less than or equal to 0 0.5 as heads and greater than 0 0.5 as tails, and finally repeating this experiment several times. Result would be a certain amount of heads and another amount of tails. These numbers would be very close to each other when number of repetitions is high enough. What about project simulation then? In project planning this would mean calculating the project several times. For each round each project task gets random cost and duration values which are sampled from task specific probability distributions. When number of simulation rounds is high enough, can resulting probability distributions for total project cost and duration be considered accurate enough? Let's have a look at a simple practical example. This picture shows how random costs and from different rounds are distributed between minimum and maximum values when task cost follows so-called beta distribution. We have the minimum cost uh, as 100 euros, the maximum as 1200 euros, we also have the most probable cost, which is 300 euros. Now, when we are running the simulation, we get different results, different uh, random samples for different rounds. Now, for the first round, it could fall somewhere over there. For the, for the next one there, and again there. And when we are repeating these experiments, we, of course, get more hits closer to the most probable cost than elsewhere. So here we go we have these different results for different rounds and then when we look at the results usually they are shown with histograms and cumulative probability distribution curves. This picture tells us that the histogram shows how many times total process cost or duration falls into certain interval and the cumulative distribution curve below it tells the cumulative probability of staying below a certain total cost or duration. Now let's have a look how this all is done in project management application, in this case Monte Carlo project. Here we have the project. The Gantt chart gives us the schedule and also shows different predecessor and successor relationships between tasks. Now for each task in this project we have these parameters, like we saw in the presentation. This task follows, again, a beta distribution, so we have these minimum, most probable, and maximum values for both cost and, and task duration. So we have, this, uh, we have these same parameters for each project task. We have run the simulation, in this case, 200 times. Now, when we look at the results, what we see is how many hits we have, for example, for this cost interval, we have 41 hits. For the next one, we have 36 hits. And the next one has 29 hits, and so on. Now, when this gets really interesting is when we look at the cumulative probability of staying below a certain total process cost. Now, the curve tells us that we have roughly a 50% probability of staying below around $9,400 and then we have roughly 70% probability of staying around $9,800 and so on. That's it for the first lesson. Thank you for listening.